Welcome to the White River Light Station and Museum. The light station, a harbor light, was built to guide the lumber schooners and later the larger passenger ships into port, helping them navigate the channel that connects Lake Michigan to White Lake. In the 1880s, industrialization started to boom in the Midwest. Charles Mears built the first sawmill on White Lake in 1838. In 1849, the Reverend William Ferry and his son Thomas built a water-powered sawmill at the mouth of White River, where White Lake meets Lake Michigan. Their farmed lumber went partially toward new construction in nearby Whitehall, but for the most part, it was shipped to larger cities like Chicago and Milwaukee. With an increasing number of ships transporting lumber, White River became congested, especially after the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, when lumber was in absolute demand. As ships began to wreck more frequently, it became clear to the Michigan legislature that a new lighthouse was needed at the entrance to White Lake. At the same time, those making profits in the lumber industry were seeking money for the expansion of the shipping channel. Business was booming, and the lumber barons hoped to build an additional channel between White Lake and Lake Michigan. In 1866, Congress agreed to the sum of $67,000 for the new shipping channel and $10,000 for a new lighthouse at the entrance to the harbor. There was disagreement as to the most appropriate position for the lighthouse. Construction was indefinitely halted on the lighthouse until the channel could be built and the authorities could reassess the area. Work on the channel progressed slowly. In the meantime, ship's captains needed a navigational aid. One shipping captain from England, William Robinson, took it upon himself to ensure the safety of his fellow sailors. He often built fires along the beach of White River to guide ships along the river. In 1869, another $45,000 was appropriated for the completion of the channel. Two years later, in 1871, it was finished. By that time, the original budget for the lighthouse had been spent. Little more than a thousand dollars remained to construct a small wooden light at the end of a pier. This pier head light, contrary to what ship captains had once hoped, was just that, a small stationary light. The faithful Captain William Robinson became the first keeper of the pier light in 1872. When the lighthouse board requested four thousand dollars for a keeper's dwelling, they were rebuffed. The next year the board proposed a larger shore light. This time, their request was heard. In 1874, they were granted $15,000 for a new lighthouse and keeper's dwelling. Captain Robinson and five other men assisted in the construction of the new lighthouse. Built with yellow Michigan brick and limestone blocks, the tower included a long cast iron staircase that ran from the cellar to the top of the tower. Robinson saw the project from start to finish and again took over his duties as keeper upon its completion. After years of waiting, when the devoted keeper finally moved into the lighthouse with his wife Sarah, he vowed never to leave it. The happy couple built a home in the tower as Robinson had always envisioned, and together they raised nine children of their 13 children at the light. Day in and day out, the keeper tended his lighthouse with wisdom and enthusiasm. He and his wife saw to the maintenance of the tower and home raised their children, and made it their personal mission in life to protect ships along the shores of White River. They imagined a long, happy life together in the lighthouse, but it was not to be. Sarah died suddenly at the age of 58. To keep his spirits up, Captain Robinson concentrated all of his energies on the care of the lighthouse. In 1887, the U.S. Life Saving Service opened the White Lake Life Saving Station. It was located across from the channel, a quarter mile from the North Pier Head Beacon. Charles Lysate was appointed the first keeper in charge. He oversaw a crew of seven men. The early 1900s saw a decline in the need for lumber, but the Port of Whitehall stayed extremely busy as the White Lake area became a destination for the summer tourists in Michigan. Large Lake Michigan passenger ships made their port here in Whitehall. The SS South America, the Carolina, and the SS Georgia were daily visitors sailing through the channel to their ports on White Lake. 
daily excursions to ports such as Chicago and Milwaukee, ferried passengers to and from, along with bringing goods such as fruit and vegetables from this area to markets in larger cities. As Captain Robinson grew older and nearer the age of retirement, his grandson and assistant, Captain William Bush, moved into the light in 1911. The captain, however, was reluctant to lose his grip on the White River Light. Even though governmental regulation allowed only one lighthouse keeper and his family to reside in the lighthouse at a time, Robinson refused to leave. Out of respect, Bush deferred to his grandfather's seniority and allowed the captain to remain in the house and tend to the beacon as he had always done. Though the towers technically belonged to his grandson, Robinson carried out most of the work well into his 80s. After many years of this arrangement, it was a well-known fact, even to the Lighthouse Board, that Robinson was still residing and working in the Lighthouse. In 1919, the Board insisted that the Keeper retire from his duties and the House. At 87, Robinson was no longer deemed capable of tending the light. He walked with a cane and couldn't get around as well as he once did, which made him a liability. They wanted Bush, a much younger man and more capable man, permanently on duty. Robinson was unmoved. To the dismay of the organization, he refused to abandon the light. At this point, the board realized that significant measures would have to be taken. They never got the chance. Determined to live out his last years at the light, Captain Robinson died less than two weeks after their decree. His relatives have said that he apparently fell under just a terrible depression. He kind of willed himself to die. He just never left the building. Records indicate on his final day, as his stay at the lighthouse ended, he died peaceably and quietly. Hundreds of people whom he had aided in the time of trouble came to grieve with the family, for Captain William Robinson was more than an honored resident of the White Lake community. He was an institution. In 1939, the United States life-saving stations, including the lighthouses, were consolidated into the U.S. Coast Guard. The White River Life Saving Station became known as Life Saving Station Number 268. It was maintained until the late 1940s when the station was abandoned and the structure sold and relocated. Five more keepers followed in the footsteps of Captain Robinson, all knowing and experiencing the presence of the deceased captain looking over their shoulders to make sure the light was lit and well maintained. One of the keepers that followed was Francis Johnson. Frances had the distinction of being the last woman lighthouse keeper on the Great Lakes. Frances had learned her keeper skills as the wife of Coast Guardsman Leo Worry, who was lighthouse keeper from 1943 to 1948. In 1949, she returned to the light by herself, hired as a civilian lighthouse keeper. When I moved in there, when Leo and I got married, uh, they hadn't replaced the, the motor on the light yet. That, that tower is two thicknesses of brick and a vacant space in between. And in that vacant space is things like a cuckoo clock, you know, cables. And we had to get up twice in the night and wind those cables back up so that the light kept going around. Probably 48 or 49, they came and uh, put uh, a Sangamo electric timer on the light that automatically turned it on earlier in the winter and later in the summer. And uh, boy, that was a real treat. <laughs> Meet Francis Marshall, formerly Francis Johnson, who was the White River Lighthouse Keeper from 1944 to 1954. She was on the Coast Guard's payroll at a whopping $30 a month, a full-fledged lighthouse keeper. She made headlines on May 17, 1953, when CBS put her on the game show, What's My Line? She stumped the panel and came home $50 richer. And they, they didn't get anywhere near Whitehall in guessing what I did. And uh, so, of course, they, they would have known why. If they didn't guess Whitehall, they wouldn't guess the, the uh, job I had. It was just a fun time in my life. In 1954, Johnson retired, making her the last woman lighthouse keeper, ending a 121-year history of female lighthouse keepers on the Great Lakes. In the 1950s, the passenger boat traffic that had been so prevalent in the earlier part of the century died out, leaving little need for the once very useful harbor light. 
In 1960, the light station was deactivated by the U.S. Coast Guard and turned over to the U.S. General Service Administration. In 1965, the GSA offered the lighthouse for sale to a qualifying institution or municipalities. Fruitland Township agreed that if it could raise the funds to purchase the light station for the price of $6,250, which was one half of the appraised value, they would. Residents, many of whom had spent their summers at Sylvan Beach Resort adjacent to the lighthouse, agreed and did raise the money for the purchase of the property. In 2012, Fruitland Township signed an agreement with the Sable Points Lighthouse Keepers Association for the everyday operation and preservation of the lighthouse. Splicka's mission is to preserve, promote, and educate the public and to make our lighthouses accessible to all. We hope that you will enjoy your time at the White River Light Station and Museum. You are sitting in the refurbished Lighthouse Keepers Workshop. On the grounds is the brick oil house that was originally built in 1902 and don't forget to climb the tower, visiting the Maritime Museum and exhibit space on your way up to take in the views of Lake Michigan and White Lake. Remember, Captain Robinson never wanted to leave. Past keepers and modern day residents have experienced hearing footsteps accompanied by the sound of a cane steadily climbing the stairs. Sailors have reported seeing a figure in the lantern room. Sarah, the captain's wife, has also been known to help out with the dusting or has been spotted with her husband, Captain Robinson, sitting in one of the recessed windows. Karen McDonald, the past director and curator of the White River Light Station, is quoted as saying that, I don't like to say the place is haunted because the word haunted brings to mind dark and frightening things. I like to say that it is spirited. This is a spirited place. The lighthouse stands as a monument and appropriate memorial to the lumber era, the keepers who kept the light burning, and the wonderful maritime history of the White Lake area. On behalf of the Sable Points Lighthouse Keepers Association, we thank you for visiting us today at the White River Light Station and Museum. We also hope to see you at the Little Sable Lighthouse in Silver Lake the Ludington North Breakwater Light in Big Sable Lighthouse located in Ludington, Michigan. All are open seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. for climbing and self-guided tours.